What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC Vegas 81. We have Sadiq Yusuf taking on Edson Barbosa. And we are back for another betting breakdown video. This week, we are breaking down at UFC Vegas 81. We have now an 11 fight card after Daniel Lacerda, uh, Edgar Chara's fight falls off. And I do want to shout out Daniel Lacerda, by the way, uh, for, for not losing this week. Shout out to Daniel Lacerda taking a step in the right direction, going out there and not losing. But unfortunately, we did lose that fight and I was actually really looking forward to watching that fight. But it is what it is. 11 fights here. I have seven bets to talk about today, six of which are plus money. And really looking forward to get into it. Looking forward to this card, UFC Vegas 81. I don't think it's uh, the best card in the world. I think it's a nice appetizer, though, for what we have next week in UFC 294. I'm really looking forward to next week. Going to have a lot more action next week, I imagine. But this week, keeping it lightish, uh, 4.5 units on the line, seven bets, six of them plus money. Uh, taking some shots, as always, see if we can keep the, the hot streak going. Um, three really good cards in a row, um, plus 69 units at this point for the year with a 21% ROI. We have eight cards left to go. Um, have been hitting some big long, long shots as of late. Last week, hit the Pfeiffer sub two. The week prior to that, hit Brundage round one. The week prior to that, hit Zell Huber round two sub. This week, I don't have nothing crazy like that, but uh, we'll see if we can you know, keep hitting some of those big spots this year. Um, but yeah, with all that out of the way, I say we get into it. Oh yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, check out the Best Bet Show. We got me and Uncle Weezy going live on fight day as well. But yeah, do appreciate all the likes, all the subscribes to the channel. It is uh, the best way to absolutely support me there. All right, let's get into it. We're going to start with the first fight on the card. We got Emily Dakota going against Ashley Yoder. It's a pass here. Um, you know, every every single week, and there's always, you know, one comment that shows up on, on one of my videos, and it's like, you know... For example, Emily Decody ruins my parlay. You suck. You're, you're trash. Unsubscribe. Where, you know, I, I never said to parlay Emily Decody. I, I never I never said to parlay Kanaka Murata. You know, I never say to, to do these things. But um, I would just be cautious, you know, parlaying Decody. Should she win this fight? Yes, she should. She should absolutely win this fight. But she's minus 400, which it doesn't add much to your parlay to begin with. And we have to trust the the crooked, corrupt judges who, even if Dakota wins, you know, will the judges even get it correct? I'm not so sure at this point. But yeah, should she win this fight? Yes. Her take not even should be good enough to keep it standing. She should be the better striker. Dakota should win this fight. She win, She should win it by decision. Um, but at minus 400, what are you going to do? Um, I, I like her by decision, but her decision props minus 175. I think it's just a pretty easy pass for me. Um, I'm moving on. Um, and if you do have to parlay something this week, I guess she's not the worst parlay piece in the world, but my God, I mean, these judges lately are just have been awful, so I would be cautious. Next, we got Chris Gutierrez taking on Alatang Haley. It's a pass fight for me. This line movement has been really weird. So Sunday morning, Chris Gutierrez opened up at plus 190, and I, I, I missed the line, and whenever I saw it, it was like minus 115 at that point. I hadn't taped the fight yet, but I was interested. I finally get around to taping the fight, and he's like minus like two-something. And then as the days go on, he got all the way up to like minus 470, Chris Gutierrez. I'm like, what's going on? Is is Alatang Haley showing up to fight this fight in a blindfold? Like, why is Chris Gutierrez minus 470 in a fight that's probably going to be competitive and in a fight that probably goes to decision uh, with the crooked, corrupt judges? Like, I'm not sure what's going on. There has been some buyback on Alatang Haley. You know, people taking the big plus money shot. I get it. I do like Gutierrez to win this fight, though. I think he probably wins it by decision. I think it's probably... Somewhat competitive, I guess. Uh, I feel like Alatang Haley does have a path here with the wrestling. It's just not something he's really shown to be able to do. But yeah, I think it's Chris Gutierrez keeping it upright. And I think it looks a lot like the Casey Kenny fight versus Alatang Haley, where Casey Kenny was able to use a ton of kicks um, to the legs, to the body especially. And Alatang Haley really had no answer for him. And Chris Gutierrez is very, obviously very good with leg kicks and kicks in general. So I like Chris Gutierrez here by decision, but no action for it on me. No action for it for me. Um, so next we got Melissa Dixon going against Irina Alexeva. This is where my night kicks off with some action. I have one unit on the fight. Doesn't go to decision at plus 100. I think this is going to be a car crash. It, I, I really do think so. This is a fight where, you know, Alexeva came out in the Egger fight. She really threw her strikes with reckless abandon. Um, she didn't really throw much technique out. There. I mean, she was just trying to take off the head of Egger. And she eventually got the fight down the mat, got that knee bar, right? 
I feel like she's going to go out there and try to look for the early finish. You know, I heard an interview with Alex Sava this week, and she's talking about how she does want to finish this fight early, which I think she is going to try. Uh, but if she does not finish the fight early, we've seen outside the UFC, she has slowed down a lot, and opponents have not really been able to take advantage of that. But I'll tell you right now, Melissa Dixon, I'm not extremely impressed with her, but what I was impressed with was the ground and pound of Marissa Dixon. If she gets on top of you, her ground and pound is absolutely vicious. And if she gets on top of Alex Sava and she's tired, I feel like Dixon could finish the fight. So I kind of feel like it's Alex Sava early, Dixon late type situation. I think the fight is a good decision at about a pick'em's solid. I have one unit on it at plus 100. Uh, would be actually a, a bigger bet for me if one of them missed weight because I thought either one of them might because we have seen Alex Sava miss weight and Dixon has actually missed weight. But both fighters missed weight. And I also didn't go too heavy on it because this fight is... Um, this fight is, uh, I know people get offended when I say this, but this is a low level fight. I mean, not much we can do. It's a low level fight. So one unit fight doesn't go to decision for the Dixon Alex Sava fight. Moving on. We got Terrence McKenney going against Brandon Marat. We got McKenney big favorite. Um, you know, this just seems like one of those spots where he takes a big step down. He goes out there, gets a first round finish, you know, rinse and repeat when he takes a step up, he gets finished himself a lot, but you know, this is a, a fight. Terrence McKenney should win. It's just, how does he win this fight? And in my opinion, I think the path to least resistance here for Terrence McKenney is to wrestle, to get the fight down to the mat. I really do believe that. You know, Terrence McKenney has four finishes in the UFC, two by knockout, two by submission. Brandon Murad, I went and watched his last fight against some, like, 40-year-old who's, like, 10 and 20, and the, the dude took him down, took Murad down easily, got into some dominant positions. Um, and if Terrence McKenney gets him down, I feel like Terrence McKenney can sub him. Terrence McKenney went out there, subbed, uh, what's his face? Um, Eric Gonzalez, he subbed uh, Zion, far as Zion as well. And I feel like the subs on the table here. And you take a look at it, Terrence, Terrence McKinney actually has more subs on his record than knockout. So the sub at plus 200, I think it's worth a sprinkle here. Because um, I think obviously he can knock him out. He can knock him out like he knocked out Mike Breedham. That, that's on the table. McKinney hits like a truck. It's just, in my opinion, I think if McKinney wants to make this look easy with little resistance, take the fight down to the mat and sub him. So I'm on the sub here, more specifically the first round sub. I did beat some line mood on this one. The first round sub opened up plus 600. Um, I was able to get on it at plus 400. I put a half a unit on it to win two units. So I'm on the first round sub there. Um, at this point, I think it would just take the sub at plus 200 because on some books, the sub one's like worse than that at like plus 175. I did see Fandle had sub one at plus 220. Um, and I did see another book had it at like plus 250. But if you can get like the sub one at plus 300, um, I think that's a good look. But even just sub in general, I think it'd be worth a sprinkle this week. Like I said, does he knock him out? He could. Um, but I think the knockout and sub are like, like it can go either way. So I don't see why the sub's priced this wide. I feel like it should be, you know, pretty, pretty close there. All right. Uh, next we got Tanara Lisboa going against Ravenna Oliveira. I'm staying away. I mean, this fight, this fight sketches me out. It really does. I'm getting kind of like Tamara's Vidal vibes here. I don't know what's going on. Tanara Lisboa, like, she looks good. It's just we don't know anything about her opponent. Nothing. I was able to watch maybe two fights of Oliveira, and she looked awful. She looked terrible. And I would not even think about betting Oliveira. But I, a lot of people are this week, which is interesting. I feel like I'm missing something. Um, But at the same time, maybe they're doing it because Tanara Lisboa shouldn't be minus 300 against anybody, which... You know, that could be true. I do lean towards Tanara Lisboa finding a finish here in this fight, but Tanara Lisboa inside the distance is like minus 110, minus 115. I can't do it. I was looking at the violence props. Um, I can't do I can't lay this price. I can't lay minus 170 on a, on a fight doesn't go in this fight. I can't. I just have a weird feeling about this fight. This fight sketches me out. I'm staying away. The pick is Lisboa probably to finish. But they're all over. I mean, the books are all over. You're not getting any value on on these violence props. You're definitely not getting any value on Lisboa at minus 350. So it's just a, it's an easy pass for me. I'm gonna I'll be okay passing on this one. Moving on, we got T.J. Brown going against Darren Elkins. This fight is wild. Um, so I I taped this fight one of the very first fights I taped this week, and I'm like, my goodness, you know, Darren Elkins is so alive in this matchup. For one. T.J. Brown cannot be trusted. T.J. Brown makes mistake after mistake after mistake. T.J. Brown's cardio is not great. T.J. Brown's been submitted twice in the UFC, six times as a whole. T.J. Brown should never be trusted as a big favorite. Darren Elkins can wrestle. Darren Elkins has cardio. He has toughness. 
Um, you know, TJ Brown is a 36% takedown defense. So I'm like, yeah, Darren Elkins is super live. Then I go to Darren Elkins' Instagram, which it is a, a viral photo, it seems like. And it's Darren Elkins. The first picture I see is him in a wheelchair. And he's talking about how he has like three, like, I'm not a doctor, but like a fractured fibula does not sound good. Like a, I don't know, like some of this MCL, like I'm not a doctor, but a fractured fibula does not sound that great. Um, so that kind of scared me off. What I'm doing here, I'm keeping it light. I, I can't ignore these Elkins prop sprinkles. I, I really can't. Elkins round two, plus 1150. Have a, have a quarter unit on it. Elkins round three, plus 1800. If Elkins wins this fight, it's TJ Brown effing up, making a mistake, getting tired, getting finished getting dragged into deep waters, looking for a way out. That's how Darren Elkins wins this fight. I don't, honestly, I don't really see Darren Elkins winning a decision. I don't just because if this fight does go, does go to decision, the optics are going to be so bad. Darren Elkins is going to be bleeding terribly. And then on top of that, I mean, Darren Elkins just looks rough these days. I mean, I, I really don't think Darren Elkins should be fighting anymore. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Darren Elkins. It's just hard to watch at this point. I was listening to some of his interviews this week and, um, he just—he looks. He doesn't look great. He's taken so much damage. I remember watching the Jonathan Pierce fight, thinking, I mean, this guy shouldn't be fighting right now. This guy shouldn't be in the cage. He looks like a like a wounded animal in there, on the feet. Um, but at the same time, I think that wounded animal could potentially beat T.J. Brown. So, sketchy fight. I would caution anybody betting on it. Um, but I am personally taking those sprinkles on Elkins. Maybe it's a donation, but I think that's how he wins the fight. We'll see. Moving on, we got Christian Rodriguez going against Cameron Simon. Um, it's a tough fight to call. I I lean towards the Simon side ever so slightly, and I said this on my prediction video. I, I truly believe that Cameron Simon has the higher ceiling between the two, and I'm high on both guys. And after seeing the weigh-ins, I, I even more so think that because Christian Rodriguez is not going to be fighting at Bantamweight anymore. Christian Rodriguez missed weight badly uh, by four pounds. Terrible look, and it's because it didn't. It happened before. I think this is the third time, maybe, that Christian Rodriguez missed weight in the UFC. I mean, it's. And then you got to think like, does does this weight cut affect him? Does it help him? Does it hurt him? I mean, that's a big question. That's a big talking point. Does it help him or hurt him? In my opinion, personally, I think it probably helps him as long as he's not like hurt or he didn't look bad on the scales at all. Just looked like he came in heavy. So. Yeah, I think the weight advantage helps him because, in my opinion, I think the game plan for for him is going to be probably to wrestle Simon, who has terrible takedown defense. I think the striking is going to be close. I think the grappling is going to be close. I think this is a close fight. Um, I I was going to pass on it, but after seeing the weigh-ins, after the the big weight miss, it just makes me want to pass on it uh, much more. I, I don't want anything to do with this fight. So it's a, it's a dogger pass for me, but the weight miss just makes me not even want to bet this fight. I feel like. The, the weight advantage is going to be, or the weight is going to be an advantage for Rodriguez there. So, um, and I'm surprised that Simon, I'm not surprised he took the fight. I'm surprised that he's only, uh, Rodriguez only forfeited like 25% of his purse. Like that's a big, big weight miss. Like I thought the fight might be off. It's such a big weight miss, but no, they're fighting. And I, like I said, I think the weight miss unfortunately helps the Rodriguez side. With that said, I'm still picking Simon, but no confidence. And uh, quite frankly, I didn't have much confidence to begin with in it. To begin with anyway. Um, moving on to the next fight. We got Michelle Pereira going against Andy Petrosky. This card, in my opinion, is probably the toughest card of the year in terms of predictions, right? Like just making a, a flat-out pick. From a betting perspective, I don't hate it, but from making a flat-out pick, I feel like a lot of these fights can go either way. I feel like there's a lot of live dogs. Andre Petrosky being one of them, um, I think he's super live. I think it's a fascinating matchup because Pereira he hasn't fought a grappler in a long time the last time he did fight a grappler he was featherweight Tristan Connolly up two weight classes on short notice got out grappled in the second and third lost the fight bad look now he's fighting a middleweight in Petrosky what worries me about Petrosky is he's one of those guys that looks exhausted after the first five minutes looks like he has nothing left and then he goes out that uh, and then he goes out there and magically you know fights through that fatigue and and finds a finish and, and wins third round like it's 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 wild you know, Petrosky's gas tank. Like, it looks bad, but he's going out there and, and doing it. Um, but he's coming in here on short notice. That is a massive red flag. And I did see on his Instagram earlier in the week, he was training at Bangtao in, in Thailand. I thought, oh, that's that's interesting. But I heard his interview today, or not today, the other day, and he was talking about how he was actually in Thailand for, for vacation. And I'm like, oh, 
you're on vacation and then you're now t- you're taking this fight. I don't know. Um, but what I do like in this fight though, so initially I was leaning, hey, maybe Petrosky can get another one of his signature late finishes here. We've seen Pereira gas out. Honestly, Tristan Connolly was very close to finishing <laughs> Pereira in the third round. Maybe Petrosky can get that third round finish. And then and then I start to make a case for Pereira getting a third round finish. I'm like, hey, maybe uh, you know, Petrosky coming here on short notice. On vacation, you're right, coming on vacation. Uh, maybe he starts to gas out. Maybe he starts to, you know, get his takedown stuff throughout the fight on the feet. Not even, maybe Pereira knocks him out in the third round. So I think this fight actually ends in the third round. And I did this bet the other the other week with um, Roman Kopilov and Josh Fremd. The fight to end in round two, plus 350. I put a half unit on it. The fight to end in round three, plus 700. I put a half unit on it. I think this fight has a solid chance of finishing. The more I look into it, the more I think about it. I think there's a solid chance this fight does finish, but I think it's going to be late because both guys are super durable early on. But we've seen Petrosky finish before. We saw Petrosky finish by Brian Battle in the Tough House in the second round. We saw him finish by Aaron Jeffrey in the second round. And although Michelle Pereira is not a finisher, if, if both these guys are gassed out, like I feel like somebody can finish at some point in this fight. So um, give me the fight to end in round two or round three, half a unit on both, looking to, uh, to hit one of those. I also don't think the under's bad as well. But like I said, I don't think there's a finish in the first round. But if you want to take the under, it's safer. Um, I don't hate that either. All right. Uh, Adrian Yanez, Jonathan Martinez. Not much to say here. Close fight. I feel like it could, in theory, be like a buy low spot on Adrian Yanez. I missed the plus money on him. Um, you know, it's going to be the, the the kicks of Martinez, the boxing of Yanez. I think Yanez is a little bit more volume, a little more power. Uh, but I'm high on both guys. You know, I know people might be low on Yanez at this point. Um after getting knocked out by Rob Font, which, yeah, it's not the best look in the world, but it was a big step of a competition for him. I'm going to go Giannis here as far as a pick, but I don't have a ton of confidence in this fight. I think this fight does go the distance. I think we could get some pretty wild scorecards. I think it's a close fight. Um, I think the line's about, I think a pick right. So staying away from this one, but it should be a fun fight for sure. Uh, Jennifer Maya, Vivian Ariujo, co-main event. Uh, I'm kind of surprised this is the co-main event because this fight's like my least favorite fight on the card. Like, I feel like they should, they could have put, like, Melissa Dixon, Irina Alex Save as the co-main event. It would have been, like, the same. Um, but uh, I would just caution anybody laying chalk on Jennifer Maya, and, he, and here's why. This fight's going to be close. I mean, every Jennifer Maya fight is close. I feel like it's one of those fights where I feel like the first round should be Vivian Ariujo. I like her. I like her striking early on. I like the power. I like the speed. I like her wrestling. She should be able to get this fight down to the mat. You know, Jennifer Maya got taken down multiple times by by some very questionable fighters. Jessica I took her down twice. Uh, Man on Fiora, a striker, took her down twice. Um, Caitlin Chukagan took her down. Like, Vivian should be able to take her down, win the first round. And then I think, you know, as the fight goes on, Vivian slows down every single time. And that's why I can't bet her. She's, her, her cardio is terrible. She's now 36 years old. I'm not betting Vivian Ariujo at this point. So I think she loses the third round. I think it all comes down to the second. The judges aren't even going to be watching the fight. And if they are, they're probably going to screw it up. Um, we're going to get some bad scorecard. It's going to be a robbery either way. So I would just caution anybody laying chalk on Maya. I don't know who wins this fight. And quite frankly, I, I don't really care. Uh, I don't care about this fight at all. I know people get really upset when I when I say something like that. But do you want me to lie and say this is the, the fight of the year? No, I'm not going to lie to you guys. So I'm keeping it honest, keeping it real. This fight's terrible. We should move on. Uh, next, we got uh, Sadiq Yusuf going against Edson Barbosa. So, yeah, I had a parlay this week, guys. Um, I parlayed up Edgar Chavez. Lacerda fight doesn't go at, at minus 525. I actually love that line and, and beat some line movement. And I parlayed that up with, uh, you know, Yusuf Barbosa fight doesn't go at minus 250. It came out to minus 150 for 1.5 units. I like that parlay. And then uh, Lacerda fight gets called off. Lacerda shows up with, like, a face infection, which... Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, but it doesn't sound great. I'm not sure what kind of face infection it is, but a face infection nonetheless. So uh, the Lacerda fights off. My parlay now turns into a 1.5 unit straight bet on the fight doesn't go to decision at minus 250. What are you gonna do? Um, which I'm fine with that. You know, I you know they always say if if you want to parlay something. You know, it should be something you would you would play straight as well, and I would I would play it straight. It's fine. So 1.5 units on the fight doesn't go minus 250. My biggest bet of the night. <laughs> so, yeah, I think this fight finishes. Both guys are dangerous. Both guys are questioned their durability. We've seen Yusuf knock down a lot in the UFC. Arnold Allen knocked him down twice. Gabriel Benitez hurt him bad in the first round. 
Um, Barbosa, I really questioned his durability and his cardio. 37 years old, big cut down to featherweight. The guy looked awful at the weigh-ins. He always looks awful at the weigh-ins, but you know that weight cut has to be taken a toll on him. Barbosa, three fights in the UFC, scheduled for five rounds. All three finished. Gaethje knocked him out in round one. Gachikadu knocked him out in round three. Kevin Lee knocked him out in round five. Um, I think Yusuf knocks him out as well. But, yeah, Barbosa's going to have some opportunities here. Barbosa's going to get the fight he wants. These guys are going to throw down. These guys are going to stand and bang. Barbosa's a great striker. Um, but I think somebody's getting served here. I, I, I don't think Yusuf grapples at all. I mean, I've, I've seen some Yusuf grappling takes. I mean, he should, but he's, he's been in the UFC for six years and has completed one takedown, so I doubt it. Um, he's a guy going to throw down. It's going to be a fun fight. I think the fight finishes. Fight doesn't go. Minus 250, 1.5 units. That's how I'm playing it, thanks to uh, Daniel Lacerda pulling out of the fight. So there you guys have it. Quick recap, uh, 1.5 units, fight doesn't go to decision, main event, minus 150. A quarter unit sprinkles, Elkins, round two, round three, round two, 1150, round three, plus 1800. Uh, Irina Alex and Melissa Dixon, fight doesn't go, plus 100, one unit. Pereira, Petrosky, ends in round two, half a unit, plus 350. Pereira, Petrosky, fight ends in round three, half a unit, plus 700. McKinney win, wins by round one, submission, half a unit, plus 400. Those are the bets. Seven bets, six plus money. Light card, 4.5 units on the line. Um, going to look into UFC 294 tonight and uh, and tomorrow. And uh, be on the lookout for some early prediction videos. I'm going to be breaking down the main event, um, Volkanovski, Islam, and then I'm also going to be breaking down the co-main event, Kamar Usman and Shamayev. So be on the lookout for those early prediction videos. And then hopefully the full card breakdown should be out Monday, Tuesday at the very latest. So, guys, thank you all for for uh, for checking out the video. Subscribe on your way out. Like on your way out. Best of luck with your bets. Bankroll management's key. It was a sketchy card last week. We made it out alive. Plus three and a half, plus three point zero five units. Thanks to Joe Pfeiffer. This is another sketchy Apex card, and we'll see if we can make it out alive again. Best of luck, everybody, and enjoy the fights. See you later.